Welcome to the Strand Hotel in Limerick for this year's Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022. This is the second year of the competition and we are delighted this year to be able to bring it to you as an in-person event. The Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year is a joint initiative between our Further Education and Training Division and our Schools Division. This is in keeping with the National Further Education and Training Strategy to integrate taste or vocational courses into second level education. Since last September, programmes in culinary skills and barista skills were undertaken by almost 450 TY students across the region who have an interest in the tourism and hospitality sector as a career or in just learning a skill for life. After months of exciting competition, four transition year students from our ETB schools across the region have been chosen to compete in this live culinary competition today, organised by Bernadette Enright and the team from our College of Fet Hospitality Campus. Our student finalists in this year's Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year competition include Dylan Stewart from Colosta Ida Agus Joseph Abbey Field, Gronia Scalan from St Anne's Community College Killaloo, Connor Barry from Gwell Colosta Limnick, and Katrina Anakinenka from Mungris Community College. And we are delighted this year to welcome staff and students from each school to help cheer on each student. Give them a round of applause. So let's take a look at how this morning began for our contestants as they arrived in the kitchen here at the Limerick Strand Hotel for the first time with their mentors. Wow, an incredible atmosphere as you can see in the kitchen. It's really, really calm in there and we're going to be going in in a couple of minutes to visit with Katrina. But now it's time to introduce the first of our schools and our TY students competing for the title of Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022. This is Dylan Stewart from Colosta Ida August Joseph Abbeyfield.
My name is Dylan Stewart and I'm from Colosh to Ida, Augustioso, Abbeyfield. So was the 12 week TY programme what you thought it was going to be when you started? Well, I thought at the very start that it would be the fact that it was going on all day. I thought it would be um, like notes and stuff like that would have to do as well, but it was all cooking and I enjoyed that. No sitting down like a normal class? No, no, we were kept going. You were, yeah. Yeah, the desserts was my favourite part of it, I think. So why did you choose to do the programme? Uh, my nan was always very good at cooking and I used to do small things with her. I do my own stuff now at home and I make my own dinners and stuff for my family. So. Excellent, I bet she's very proud of you that you're here. Yeah, she is. I used to always cook small little things myself, but I started to get better at it now and I'm doing more, I suppose, posh dishes. So where are you picking up the tips for the posh dishes? I hear you have a part-time job now after as well. Uh, right? Yeah, I work in Leans Hotel in Abbey Field. But I do a lot of the kind of cleaning work, but I do starters and stuff like that as well with it. And you're earning as well while you're learning, yeah. which is great. What have we decided to do for the final? Uh, so for our final, we're going to do a stuffed Irish chicken with curry chase, black pudding and fondant potato. And we're going to be using local vegetables. And for my uh, dessert, we're going to be doing a gorse and dandelion uh, cheesecake with Rigney's Farm Granola. Lovely. Where are you going to get the gorse and the dandelion? Uh, so the gorse I'm going to get from my own back garden and the dandelion I'll be getting from my back garden as well. Lovely. How does it feel to be chosen for, from your school to represent Abbey Field in the final? It's, it's good to have got this far. So we'll just see how it goes now, but I'm really happy with how far I've got. I'm delighted to be joined by Liam Murphy, who is the principal of Dillon School. Liam, who's here with you today from the school? Uh, thank you very much, Patrick. Well, we have uh, Mary Quaid, our career guidance counsellor, Katrina Noonan, our home economics teacher, uh, our students from our TY, and of course, we have Dillon's parents and sister here as well uh, to support him today. And uh, we're very proud of him here as he's progressed uh, to this stage of the competition in this. I suppose, very prestigious venue and at this level. Fantastic, Liam. Um, tell us a little bit about the school's involvement in this initiative this year. Well, we were delighted to come on board with this initiative this year. We were very excited by it. Uh, it's our first year involved. And uh, I mean, you could really get the sense in the school there was lovely excitement. Uh, and our front corridor smelled like a restaurant a few days a week. So uh, I was up and down that corridor supervising quite a bit. You know, it was a very pleasant environment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah from time to time too, yeah. So it was a wonderful opportunity for all our students who took part and uh, as we said it's there's a great connection I suppose uh, I really believe it's great co-curricular support uh, you know we've lots of established things over over the years you know sports debating and all the rest of it but to see things branch out like this and have this support uh, here from Limerick and Clare ETB and uh, give students some real practical hands-on skills you know, develop a real sense of the culinary arts and then obviously some of our students, like all these students here today, have really flourished in that environment and uh, we're delighted about that. Uh, we're delighted that that's here and it's established and we're very grateful for it. And as I said, we're, we're very proud here of, of Dylan, who's made it to this stage. Yeah, that was going to be my final question for the minute. Uh, you must be so proud of Dylan because out of all of the participants from Colosh de Idagos, Joseph Dylan was selected. He was indeed and I mean that was a, a fairly strong competition there uh, but um, uh, you know he, he just took to it and he seems to have a real flair for it and uh, you know we wish him the very best of luck today and we know it's something uh, that he'll have forever. Brilliant Liam thanks so much. Thank you Patrick. We're going to go to the kitchen now and Katrina is there with Dylan and Dylan's mentor. Hi Patrick, thanks very much. Yes, we are here in the kitchen and I'm with uh, Tom Flavin, of course, our executive chef and mentor for Dylan. Uh, we just saw the package there earlier with Dylan and we also heard from his school. I can't believe how calm and relaxed the kitchen is here today. They've taken to it like a duck to water. You can see all of the four students, they're absolutely fantastic. And it's not easy with the cameras and the lights and everything, but they've really, really taken to it. It's fantastic. It's really good to see. Really good. Now, I have to say, uh, Dylan, I was so impressed uh, when I met him last week. And, of course, they had the experience of a professional kitchen, an unbelievably fantastic kitchen at the College of Fet Hospitality Campus. But what has it been like when they arrived here today? You know, this is a live competition. As you said, there's lights and cameras. A lot more pressure today, but they seem to be handling it so well, Tom. We just eased it to them gently. We just showed them the kitchen first, then the lights arrived, then the seats arrived, and then the, then the audience arrived. So it's about gradually easing them into it, but they're really, they're loving it. They're absolutely loving it. It's great to see. Like, they're four fantastic students. I'm delighted with them. 
So uh, tell us a little bit about Dylan's main course today. What have we got for Dylan? Dylan is doing a stuffed chicken breast. He deboned the chicken. He's making chicken stock, chicken jus. He's stuffed it with Caroline Rigney's black pudding. He has some roasted um, uh, purple sprouting broccoli, carrot puree. Um, he's doing really well. He's doing really well. And if I remember correctly from our interviews last week, he picked the gorse and, and dandelion from his own garden, didn't he? Yes, for the dessert, he has some um, dandelion and gorse cheesecake, but he's also using some local granola on top as well. It's really, really good, really good. Well, I am really looking forward to talking you, uh, to you a little bit later on about the local produce. We have a beautiful stand outside with the display. It's so important uh, for local produce and to stay local and stay seasonal. So we're going to be chatting a little bit more about that with you later, Tom, and also as mentor to our other chefs. But for now, we're going to go back and uh, see our next school. It's over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Tom. Thanks very much, Katrina. Wow, the atmosphere in the kitchen is amazing, but still perfectly calm. I think we're all going to get really hungry by the time we get to 12 o'clock. Now it's time, as you said, to meet our next school and competing in the Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022 is our St. Anne's Community College and representing the school, Grania Scalan. I'm Grania Scalan and I'm from St. Anne's Community College, Killaloo. Hi Grania, how are you today? Hi, good. So are you enjoying the course so far? Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. I like the stress. You like the stress? I like, yeah, being put under the pressure. Good. And how did you find the TY course itself? Yeah, I really liked it. It was calm and it wasn't too stressful, whereas this is like a bit different. There's only four of us and there's more like eyes on you and it's for a bigger kind of end result. What's, what got you an in interest in cooking? Um, well, when I was younger, myself and my dad, he used to have a coffee, coffee shop um, in Limerick. So myself and my dad used to make like big batches of like bread and everything in the kitchen. And then if I went into my granny on the weekends, we do like cupcakes and that's where my kind of sweet tooth came into things. <laughs> Great. So would, would it, doing the course give you a, an interest in taking it further in your career? Yeah, I love to like go abroad and stuff. So I like to get other kind of like menus and like see what other people around the world like, like to eat and stuff. And what are you cooking today? I'm doing a pork with purple sweet potato, wild mushroom and like a leek cream sauce. And then my dessert is um, a bakewell tart. And so you're looking forward to the final next week? Yeah, yeah. looking forward to it. Nervous? Yeah. A small bit, but it's but nervous good, good to be a bit yeah. nervous, yeah. yeah. Excited for it. So Gronia is um, representing her school, St. Anne's Community College. I'm delighted to be joined by Mary Fitzgerald, Deputy Principal. Mary, uh, who have you got with you from the school today? So today we have here, we have our Career Guidance Counsellor, Claire McCormack. All our students, um, some of our students from TY to support Grania here, these students participated as well in the culinary and the barista. And we also have with us um, Grania's mum, Fiona, her nana, Rita. They're all claiming to be the one that taught her how to be a chef here today. And also we have Kieran, her dad, who's, who's at home looking in at us as well. Brilliant. Uh, so we heard Gronia referencing all of their past history yes, and the influences, yes. etc. Tell us a little bit about um, your experience of the initiative. This is the second year St. Anne's Community College has been involved in Junior Chef of the Year. Um, absolutely fantastic, you know, and it really can, it tells you what collaboration can bring and this fantastic event and to be here now at the final is just amazing and I think we'll be, there'll be, there'll be fierce competition again next year after seeing this on television. Um, so we did the barista and we also did the cookery and it's just wonderful to have that amount of time because usually cookery classes, I'm a economics teacher myself and usually cookery classes are only 80 minutes mm. and it's fantastic to see the kids, you know, doing it from start to finish all morning, serving it, um, eating it, the whole lot and it's just brilliant that the Limerick Education and Training Board and more collaborations the better and um, this is just an example of how, how good it can get. Fantastic, Mary. Uh, I'm, I would say the food was absolutely amazing, as we it heard was, from Liam yeah. earlier on. It Did was you amazing. all get to uh, taste? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, whether it was COVID or not, I was still tasting. Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Um, tell us a little bit about Grania. You must be so proud of her yes, representing the school. Yes, we're so proud of her. She's so cool and calm and collected. And you see her bright smile there. You know, she'd brighten anyone. And she's just so competent and capable. She, cap capable. She's such a fabulous chef. And we wish her the very best today. Great, fantastic, Mary. Thank you so much. Give Mary a big round of applause. 
so we are going to go back and actually see in the kitchen how Gráinne is getting on. Katrina is with her mentor chef, Dermot O'Callaghan. I am indeed, Patrick, and she is getting on great. Very cool and calm and collected, as you said, and great to see the support from her school. I am here with our executive chef and mentor, Dermot O'Callaghan, just to talk a little bit more about Gráinne and the progress she's making today. Dermot, this is your first time in the competition. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I love it. I think it should be in every school. They, and the kids really enjoy it. And hopefully, even if we get a, one or two students who go forward into the, into the industry, it would be great. I have to say, compared to you know, our years back in ho home economics, you know, when you think of a course like this, it's just so different. The level of professionalism. Give us a little idea of the kind of training and the hours, because we see it all here, it all looks so glamorous, and we just don't realise the, the time and the hours and the skill set that they have to learn through the course. Oh yeah, the course, we, we, it's an eight-week course in, in each school, but it's, it's not like a normal class, it's like nine o'clock till two o'clock, so they're used to an hour or 45 minute class, so we're, we're going in for a four or five hour class, which is, it's a, and it's just the whole concentration for that length of time, it's a big difference, but they love it, the kids, they really love it, so. And you can see as well with the health and safety and discipline and timings, we can uh, hear the timer going off there, which was perfect. Thank you for that, Gron. Yeah, exactly. Gronia's timer's gone off. So that's what I mean. It, to have to be ready and timed, that's pressure, isn't it? It's a lot of pressure, and especially on a day like today. Like the, it, They've all done it individually, but to have the whole of them at the same time, it's huge pressure. So tell us a little bit uh, before we go back to our next school about Gronia's main course today. Today is cooking a uh, roast fillet of pork with creamed leeks and uh, king oyster mushrooms and that's oh, yes, it's purple sweet potatoes. She got Can't them. forget that. Yeah, they're local up in the urban co-op inside in Limerick. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that earlier with Tom and we'll be talking about it more. The local produce, it's just so great to see all this fresh local produce. It's so important for chefs to, to keep local and keep seasonal, isn't it? It's up in the Eastway Business Park. So yeah, all the local producers, you can get everything up there. So it's really, yeah, it's really interesting up there, yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, it's heating up in the kitchen here, Patrick, but we're going to go back now to you and meet our next school. Thanks very much, Katrina. Wow, it's really heating up in the kitchen. All right. Yes, our next school competing for the title of Junior Chef of the Year 2022 is a school that won the overall competition last year. From Gael Colos de Limnick, it's Connor Barry. <laughs> My name is Conor Barry and I'm from Gwell Clash Lumni. How are you finding the TY course? I thought it was really interesting. Yeah. Just gave me the chance to do a lot of what I enjoy and I learned a lot of new recipes and just skills in the kitchen. Just what it's like to be in a more industrial kitchen rather than just, you know, your home. The other students are all really nice. It, they're easy to get along with in the kitchen and it's just nice to meet new people. Do you do much cooking at home? Um, I started a couple of years ago just making dinners, just whenever my family needed me to. And I've just started cooking a bit more. I've started to enjoy it more and I like trying new recipes and new foods. And so what are you going to be cooking for the competition? I'm going to be making wild garlic pesto to put in chicken and orzo, along with beetroot wedges and mashed aubergine, along with a raspberry and chocolate tart. And are you finding a uh, different pressure now once we've got to the competition stage? Yeah, there's a bit more pressure and got to get everything neat and tidy and everything's perfect. I enjoy it, but there is definitely that slight bit of just, this is a competition behind the practice. There's a bit of pressure, especially as last year, the student from Gwell Colosh Lumni won that competition. Okay. So, so there's just a bit of pressure on the it. The pressure's on you, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, makes me just a little more focused and just pay attention to details. I'm delighted to be joined by Preve Ida of Gael Colosh the Limnig, uh, Kevin O'Rahilly. Kevin, you must be uh, absolutely thrilled to be here today. Who have you brought with you from the school? Thanks, Patrick. Um, joining us today is Kira Dunn, our guidance counsellor, Dahi O'Gady, our deputy principal, and Christine Nikahasig, who is our home economics coordinator, as well as Connor's fellow students and friends. He's um, Mother Gráinne, and there's many people watching in as well, looking on. Fantastic. We mentioned in, and we heard Connor in the VT talking about uh, pressure in the competition. You were the overall winners last year. You must be one of the strongest advocates for this initiative. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I remember discussing with, with Bernadette and her team in FET division last year, and we were extremely lucky to, to win the 
competition with uh, Fionn Kennedy and I suppose he has set down the, the standards for everyone else and uh, poor old Connor is feeling the pinch there I think this morning but he's a very calm individual and he's um, you know he's a very very uh, fantastic ambassador for our school as well. Yeah he really is so calm we've seen that in, in the package and when we were recording previously and obviously in the kitchen this morning we're looking forward to seeing what he serves up here today and we're going to find out a little bit more on that in a couple of minutes. Talk to me about the initiative itself and year in involvement in it this year? How many students or how did it work for you? Um, it has been incredible. We had, I think, around 30 transitioner students who um, initially took took part in the process and that has been whittled down to, to Connor now and the other three candidates as well. So it's, uh, from the get-go, we've seen the, the benefits and the opportunities and just to, you know, open up the students' horizons to the culinary arts and what's available out there. It's, it's absolutely incredible and I suppose I would just like to thank, as I said, Bernadette and her team as well as the schools division and Limerick Clear Education and Training Board um, for, for giving this opportunity. Great, so final word to you then on Connor. Um, anything you want to say? Um, he, he, just that he's incredible. Uh, we're very, very proud of him and to wish him the very, very best of luck uh, today in the final. Great stuff, Gurumila Thank you very choice. much, Kevin. Perfect. We're going to go back to the kitchen now and Katrina, you are with Connor's Mentor Chef. I am absolutely, Patrick. Thank you. Yes, Dermot again. We're back to you, Dermot. I was interrupting you there. You're running around. You're helping. Uh, give us a little bit of an idea about, you know, the kind of mentoring that you're doing here. Do the students choose everything themselves and you just kind of advise or do you help to devise the menu with them? Basically, they pick the menus themselves, what they'd like to cook, but we give a bit of constructive criticism as well. We kind of guide them what way to go with ingredients what if if they come up with an idea and if you think it's not going to work just just when ingredients go together we just push them down that line but no mainly they come up with the menus themselves yeah. i'm really getting an insight uh, in the kitchen here you know that the buzz that's going on um i hear the timers going off there tell us what's happening there when we hear the timers going off here in the kitchen i get panicked i don't know about you but i'm like oh they know they're not panicking so <laughs> it's like no they have everything is down to it should be down to a fine art at this moment everything they're trying to just time, everything should be timed, everything, all the elements of the dishes to get them all ready for the same time. I can see that you're really enjoying this competition so much. Would you have loved to have had something like this when you were in school? Love this, yeah. I, I'd have been more on the practical idea side of things than the academic, so this would have been my ideal the subject, yeah. Uh, finally then, I'm just going to ask you, Dermot, what are the kind of problems that uh, perhaps the students might have been worried about coming into this? What, what are the things that you're looking out for, the stress points for them? The stress point, I, I think the, the, the big thing is that their co-students are watching them and it's like all eyes on them, so it's like they're not used to that, so it is huge pressure, yeah. And all the cameras and the lights and, yeah, a woman in a red jacket in annoying yeah, yeah, him, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, we understand. Microphone shoved in your face, yeah, they're not used to this. It so. doesn't help. No, Absolutely. no, not at all. Dear me, we're going to leave you in peace for a moment to go back and help with Connor. But what we're going to do now is hand over it to Patrick and our final school at Munger Community College. Great. Thanks, Katrina. Yes, uh, it's time to meet the uh, second year that Munger Community College have been involved in the competition. And this year competing for the title of Junior Chef of the Year 2022 is Katrina Anakinyenka. I'm Katrina Nikienka and I'm from Munger Community College. Who inspired you? Like, why did you choose to do the culinary course? Um, well, I've been helping my mum cook for years. She's really good at cooking and, you know, we've always been watching the cooking channels on TV. It's always been something I've enjoyed doing. So when I had the opportunity to um, do culinary, I, I went straight away. Excellent. Would you recommend it to other students to do Definitely. it? Definitely. Yeah, it's something that I'm, I'm really happy I, I did. It's a great experience. So Katrina, what dish have you chosen to cook on the final? For the final, I'm going to be doing a dunebeg fish pie with baby fennel and um, a limerick um, shared potato cheese um, mashed potato. Lovely, sounds amazing. Yeah. And for dessert, what did you choose? I, I'm going to do a sticky toffee pudding um, and it's going to have a surprise with it. Oh lovely, yeah. lovely, that sounds good. Your, your friends are obviously going to be here on the day watching you. Do you feel under pressure? Are you going to be nervous? Um, no, they've, they've always been really supportive. So I think I'm going to feel more supported than nervous, to be honest. That's great. It's yeah. a great team in Mongers. Yeah. It was quite difficult to choose one winner, to be honest. I wanted to represent the school. How do you feel to be representing the school? I'm like, I'm very grateful that I was chosen and I'm very proud that I can represent Munger and hopefully, you know, I can try my best and um, it's kind of all that matters. Really.
So we're delighted to be joined by Katrina's principal, Liam O'Mahony. Liam, uh, you are here with a big contention from Munger Community College today. Who thanks. have you brought? Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Um, well, we have Sinead uh, Maher, who is our transition year coordinator, and say that Sinead does a wonderful job of being an understatement, as every student knows in our school. And obviously, we're joined by Katrina's friends from TY, and her mum is here as well. And I think uh, Katrina is very confident about this. Um, I'd say some of her friends and her mum may be a bit more nervous, um, to be honest, but um, sure, it's a great day for all of them and the confidence all those students get from be being involved in a program like this is just fantastic. And to hear them all on camera, they are totally confident, speaking with passion about what they're doing. Isn't it fantastic? You can really see that, absolutely. I said uh, in my introduction, Liam, this is the second year Munger yeah. Community College has reached the final. Um, you must really like the initiative and, and what have you to say about it? Yeah, I think um, even down to Katrina's dish there today, there's some fish from Dunbeg and in the smoked uh, cheddar is from Limerick. It kind of sums up Limerick and Clare. Mm. And I suppose what has this initiative meant to us with the barista, as mentioned by others, the culinary skills, and even hairdressing we were involved with this year as well, all fantastic initiatives. And it's great to see Limerick and Clare Education Training Board looking outside the box. And I suppose having people like Bernadette there who coordinates this for us, and I know there's a lot of other people behind her as well, but it's that opportunity um, to try something new. And isn't that what transition year is about? It's about finding ourselves, developing as people, learning. And is there anything more basic than knowing how to cook well? We talk about diet, we talk about obesity, we talk about fitness, but behind it all is a healthy diet. Mm. And I think it being displayed and the number of students who get an opportunity, not to mention the job opportunities, take the Barista course, you know, how many students work in Baristas over the summer? So it gives them great opportunities. Yeah, listen, you're a great seller. We'll have to get you out on this <laughs> nationwide. You're well, absolutely right. It's absolutely. Now, you're a very young school, um, uh, Liam. And so um, was it, how was it for you in terms of having Tom coming over and mentoring the students? I, look, Tom fits into our flats. You'd have to remind yourself that Tom was there. Um, no more than Liam was saying earlier, the smells is what reminds us there. And yeah. this year, we made a great move because we um, put them into the home ec room beside my office, which was a great move. Perfect. Thanks, Irish Sinead, <laughs> for that. Um, so it's, look, Tom fits in. He's nearly like a member of staff when he comes in. He's confident with the students. Students are confident with him. They feel totally comfortable. I walk in and out that room, and they don't even see me coming in and out, which says it all. Great. Final word to you then, Liam, uh, wishing uh, Katrina the best luck. You must be so proud of her. Uh, look, Katrina is fantastic. You saw it there in the, the clip. I don't need to add anything to it. And she represents our schools so, so well. And we are so proud of her. And I know all our friends are as well. And we just want to wish her and everybody the best of luck today. Brilliant. Thank you. Well put. Thanks very much, Liam. Let's head back now to the kitchen and to meet uh, Katrina is talking actually to Tom, uh, Katrina's mentor chef. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, we're back in the kitchen. And uh, as I said, lots of timers is going off, lots of activity. Uh, Tom, we're back with you. And it's Katrina that we're focusing on now. Great to see so much support, isn't it, from her fellow students and the school? It's fantastic. It's great to see all of them out there. It's really, really good. And unfortunately, we could only choose four for the final. If the kitchen was a bit bigger, we could have a few more. But they're doing really well. We're really proud of them. Now, uh, we've noticed, of course, and if you're watching outside on the screens, that we have our head uh, judge, which is Wade Murphy, Chef uh, Wade Murphy, who's here. And he's going around, and I'm just wondering, could you give us a little bit of an insight into what Wade is looking for at the moment? Uh, what is Wade, you know, when he's judging, when he's looking, what is he picking out? He's looking for hygiene, he's looking for make sure that they work cleanly, that they're working clean as you go, that they're not in, you know, the, their stations are clean. He's looking at techniques, like he's, there's fish preparation going on here today, there's butchery going on, there's pastry being made, there's veg being roasted, but then he's going to look for how they, how they cook everything, that it's cooked correctly. He was very good and gave him some tips throughout the, the morning, and it's all going to be down to taste now, so whatever is, the, the, the judges outside are all going to be tasting on taste, flavour and textures. Anything that Katrina was particularly worried about today with her selections for main course and dessert? No, Katrina has one of the, on, of the only really hot desserts, so that's a little bit more pressure than anybody else, but she's, um, she did the filleting of the fish. She had um, black sole to fill it there earlier on. Wade gave her a few tips on that as well, which was great to see. Um, no, we're, re we're doing really well. We haven't used this oven here before, so we're just making sure that everything is cooked with probes. Um, we have a little bit of time, so she's just preparing her dessert now. She has sticky toffee pudding, and she's used some apples from Atty Flynn. She's dried them, infused 
the apple juice from Eddie Flynn to get more of an apple taste into it, dried them, and they're going to be garnishing the, apple, the uh, top of winning today. It's really good. I have to say that's one of my favourite desserts, so I'm looking forward to that later. And I'm looking forward to talking to you again about the local produce. We have a lovely stand outside, so we'll be talking to them. Uh, now, there are other mentors uh, throughout the competition, and it's not just our head mentors that you see here. So I'm just going to invite Carl, if Carl Dollery is here, because uh, you are one of our many mentors. Thanks a million, Tom. Um, Carl, welcome. How are you? I'm how are you finding the competition? Oh, I think they're just, they've just been fabulous. Um, you know, I've got to know these kids over the last few weeks, been in and out to the campus, and they've just gone from strength to strength in what they've done. And they've, you know, they've, they've shown skills far beyond what we would expect. And it, it just goes to show the importance of having something like this going forward for us to be able to rely on in the hospitality, even if it is just for summer jobs and stuff like that. But the kids have just played a huge amount of skill, diligence and effort and all the things that we really look forward to seeing junior commies coming in. So, it's yeah. so fantastic to see the team effort. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. just been, you know, Tom, Dermot, they've just been super with them. And you know what they've put in, they've got back in abundance. And all you can see is them today, you know, they're super organized. They're, they, they just really care about what they're doing. They've just been brilliant. You're really inspiring us today, everyone is. What would you say to a student perhaps who's, you know, coming up the ranks and maybe going into transition and has always thought about this as a choice? What would you say to them to encourage them? Oh, I would say absolutely give it a go. You know, life is about making mistakes. Not everything is going to be a triumph. And that's what we are here is to bring you along. And, you know, if you get into a really good place somewhere like, you know, with Wade, Dermot, Tom, you know, you're under such guidance and they, they're going to really care about your career and give you the best opportunity to, you know, to move forward and be, you know, have a very successful career ahead of you. Thank you so much. As you can see, lots of words of inspiration here uh, in the kitchen. That's it for the moment. We will be back in the kitchen a little bit later on. But for now, that's it from us. Very much, Katrina. Now we are back in the room. Can we give a big round of applause to all of our participating schools and TY students in this year's Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022? So it is coming to that time. We will be serving actually within the next few minutes. So it gives us the perfect opportunity before the food is served to meet our judges. And the first of our judges is head judge, Chef Wade Murphy, who so many of you know from 1826 Adair and your member and former Commissioner General of Eurotalk. Wade, uh, when I came in this morning, you were right there in the thick of it in the kitchen. Um, how important, first of all, are initiatives like this for budding chefs? Oh, I can't, I can't emphasize enough how, how important this is for the industry and for, 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 for everything going forward. Um, I just have to have to commend the the, the young students um, on their work ethic and how unflappable they all were and how calm they were um, when I came in and there's cameras in their faces and I'm standing around tasting things and it's brilliant it's brilliant to see and you know the future of Irish food are, is in the hands of of young kids like this. Um, and it's, it's just really encouraging and just watching how they work, how clean they work and everything like that. So it's, it's absolutely phenom phenomenal and it's really, really encouraging for an old guy like me, you know. <laughs> Listen, less of the old now, Wade, right? <laughs> you were looking fantastic. You were, you, were, you were kind of passing on some of the tips as well. Were they nervous? Did you get a sense of mm, nerves? No, I didn't get a sense of nerves. And look, passing on the tips, it's, it's every day is a school day, even, even in, in, in the cooking world, you know. Um, yeah. So it's learning and stuff like that. So just little tips is, is how, you, how you gain the knowledge. But no, the, the nerves, I, 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 at 16, 15, 16 years of age, I don't know if I could do what those guys are doing right yeah. now. And it, it, it's brilliant. It's really, really good to see. And their skills is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. This is your second year judging the competition, Wade. Um, is there anything in particular that you're looking for? No, I'm just looking like, obviously, I'm looking for good hygiene practice, good practices you know, um, good use of ingredients. Uh, obviously, with the way things have gone uh, these days, you know, waste and things like that, I'm looking at that as, you know, trying to keep it down to a minimum. Delighted to see that the guys have all their produce and all their prep in reusable plastic containers. Um, you know, that's, that's very, very important now with, with the way things are going and, and how we're, um, 
you know, trying to trying to make the industry better uh, environmentally. So I was watching for little things like that and knife skills, and you know, I was teaching a few of them. Like, did you ever do karate? When you're holding your knife, always use the claw, you know, so you don't cut the tips of your fingers off. Because I've lost a few of them over the years myself. But no, I was just looking for stuff like that, and you know, good use of ingredients uh, and good cooking skills, and and like it's it's brilliant. It's really good, and I've judged many, many, many a competition over the years, and this is this is up there, you know. Really good. Thanks a million, Wade. All right, we're going to move now to our second judge, and it is, of course, Oliver Sullivan, our manager of tourism careers um, in Fall to Ireland. Oliver, so great to have you with us again for a second year. You've always been a great supporter of the ETB and this competition. Uh, tell us a little bit in your eyes, after watching and seeing, you know, for the last two years, why it's so important for Fall to Ireland to be involved in a competition like this. Well, I suppose um, from our perspective in particular, from the division that I work in, uh, Tourism Careers, you know, um, when you look around the audience here today and you see the four finalists in the kitchen participating in this Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year competition, you know, you, you have to be proud of those individuals, you have to be proud of the schools, you have to be proud of everybody involved, the guidance here, teachers, the, the schools, the career, career guidance. And I suppose we are really, it's really important for us as the National Tourism Development Authority to uh, promote, encourage and support the whole initiative of, you know, encouraging individuals to become part of tourism and hospitality as a career. And I think, um, you know, it's a no-brainer for us to be in here and to sponsor it and support it. And I think, you know, when you look around and you see the four individuals in the kitchen participating in the cookery competition, um, you know, we talked about stress and we talked about pressure and Wade said, you know, everything is calm and cool and collective. Um, this is the environment that creates, you know, an understanding of what this tourism and hospitality business is about going forward. I'd like to think that, as Wade said, that these individuals would consider tourism and hospitality as a career going forward. And we in Falls Ireland would only be too delighted to support that and, and, and you know, to be part of that. Um, so anything we can do in you know, developing a career path for these individuals or for any of these guys out here in front of us, um, we'd love to be involved in that. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, we have some exciting news uh, for our audience and for everyone. Uh, it sounds like we're just getting news in that uh, we might be at that stage for plating up. So we are going to ask some further questions of our judges, but we might start to uh, see some of our students come out and some of our main courses. So we're going to start. And thank you, Niall, is coming out with Katrina and Tom, as you can see there, plating up. And Katrina, um, who represents Mungers Community College, uh, she has a Doombeg fish pie, baby fennel, smoked limerick cheddar mash as her main course. So she's making her way out now, and we're going to present those to our judging panel, who I'm sure will be relishing the chance to sample what's been done in the kitchen. Did you get to sample anything while you were inside? I didn't. I thought it best to leave them in peace, <laughs> to be honest with you. But it all smelt amazing. And as Wade said, you know, lots of advice going on. And I was picking up some tips as well. At one stage, they were, uh, I think it was the sticky toffee pudding. And I could hear Tom saying, you know, let the knife cut it. And I was like, that's my problem. Mine always ends up in pieces. So now I know why. Listen, we're, we're, <laughs> as, as Wade said, every day is a school day, right? right so we're absolutely. all learning today. So that's really good. OK, so that's the first course served then. What we might do is do you want to continue yes. you have another question yeah. actually for Oliver Oliver yeah we were just talking there and you were talking about promotion and encouragement and that is what Falter Ireland is all about Falter Ireland inspires us so uh, what can you tell us a little bit more about maybe initiatives that would encourage individuals not just second level students uh, into tourism and hospitality as an industry yes I suppose um, look at we have um, we have a load of um, initiatives going on and I suppose I could be here for the day if I wanted to you know, talk about them all, but a couple of things that we are involved in is, um, for example, we have, <coughs> in conjunction with our industry partners, we have a TY work experience platform on our tourismcareers.ie website and um, you know, that's an opportunity for the, the individuals in, in the TY um, to see these jobs participated or, or, or advertised, should I say, by the industry and participate in them. Um, you might have heard on the radio in the last couple of days we have a new initiative going on, a new um, recruitment campaign called 
works for me. I was actually only coming up the road yesterday and I actually heard it for the first time on the radio. It's on all the, the, the social media platforms. It's on online, it's on digital, and it's on um, social and press. So just look out for that in the next couple of um, days. You'll hear it going on for the next couple of weeks um, in those platforms. I suppose we also have a lot of work going on with the Department of Social Protection where we, we you know, identify from our industry current colleagues uh, a cohort of students or a cohort of individuals who might be suitable for our tourism and hospitality industry and we work with those departments to enhance that um, offering to the industry. Um, I suppose we also work with, you know, um, as an international piece, we try and, uh, I suppose, analyse what the opportunities are abroad and overseas regarding um, the opportunity for recruitment to support our industry as well. And, um, Ivor, I'm going to have to stop you there. I'm so no sorry, but it is so important when we have our dishes ready because we want to get them to you hot and on time. Correct. So we have our second We are. Student. We're going for service. And this is Gwael Colosh de Limnick and Connor Barry's main course is reaching our judges now. And Connor's main course is roast breast of chicken, foraged wild garlic pesto, orzo pasta, beetroot and aubergine. Now we're very conscious obviously that we need the, uh, the taste uh, of our judges as well, but we'll continue talking to them. Give Connor a big round of applause, folks. Welcome, Connor. Olivia, we're going to come to you next. And Olivia is uh, Councillor Olivia Sullivan, of course, from Limerick Food Group, uh, Eat in Limerick and Pigtown Limerick. So as well as a local representative, you're also a really lo uh, uh, strong local food advocate. Um, how important are competitions like this to raise awareness of the importance of food in our region? I have to say, Patrick, you're being really cruel now because the food is right in front of me. <laughs> and I don't know if you can get the smells out there, but it smells amazing. So I'm trying not to dig in and I'll answer my questions and quickly pass on the microphone. Okay, good. Um, I, th I think this is incredible. Like, um, when I was 16, actually, I started working in, in the tourism and hospitality industries and I was there for years and I made so many Irish coffees out in the Two Mile Inn Hotel for tourists coming in and it was a great experience and I think you get to meet so many people from so many walk, you know, different walks of life. It actually was a great grounding, I think, and I never planned to end up in politics. I somehow have at this age of my life, 30 years later, but um, it probably was a great grounding for any business uh, where you're going to be meeting a lot of people and being able to meet people at any level. And people have often said that to me, oh, sure, we can bring you along to anything, you know. We'll bring you out to the country. I'm, I'm, I'm my parents are originally from the country. Or we'll bring you along to such and such, some posh event and uh, you can sit you beside anyone because you're grand and actually I think a lot of that came from my grounding and my beginning in the tourism and hospitality industries because it's amazing how um, it broadens your mind it opens you up to so many different um, cultures to meeting people from so many different countries certainly when I was working um, behind bars or, or serving tables serving weddings um, I just, it was, it was such a fantastic, I have fantastic memories from it and I worked in it for years throughout when I was in uh, secondary school and, and into, um, and in college years, so I can't recommend it enough and actually I kept going back to it, so I've done a lot on the festival side, worked with food festivals and uh, I, I guess I still am, it's, it's found my, I've somehow found my way into politics, but the tourism and hospitality industry is so important and I have a big role for it. I think there's food coming, which means I have to stop talking now, so I'll finish up. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Olivia. Yes, we do have more food coming. So we have to say now we have Dylan Stewart and his mentor, Tom Flavin, uh, bringing the uh, judges a gorgeous uh, main dish. And this is stuffed Irish chicken, curd chase, black pudding, fondant potato and local vegetables. And we stress the local element, don't we? Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely vital. So we'll go back to Olivia. One final quick, quick question for you. you it's your first year involved in the competition. Uh, your impressions of the level of talent because you, you certainly can smell it in front of you. I've, um, I'm not a professional judge by any means, but I've judged a few competitions because of my work in local food, and um, uh, this is really impressive. It's actually like being invited out for a meal, so this is a lovely invite to get to this judging panel, and uh, I'm blown away. I mean, I couldn't present it. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to pretend for a minute that I'm a great cook, and I couldn't, be do I couldn't do what the students are doing here today, so hats off to them. I'm in awe. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks Olivia.
All right, we're going to let Olivia get uh, a bite to eat. Uh, Stephen, I know you're, you're uh, salivating there as well, going, are they going to let me taste this? <laughs> we're just going to have a quick word with you as well. Stephen O'Connor, of course, our chair of the IHF Shannon Branch and, of course, our general manager here at the Limerick Strand Hotel. First of all, can we just say what an absolutely fantastic array of look at the lighting look at the the room look at everything that you've set up for us today we appreciate so much and all the background work that people don't really realize goes into so sort of events like this so thank you so much for that first thank of all you, yeah. and thanks for all the support from the staff but i suppose we just want to ask you as your uh, role as judge um do you know what we're gonna we're gonna go first let's do, let's let yeah let's let another dish more come out food. more, more food. food yes uh, hold that question Stephen. so this time it's uh Grania scalan and her mentor chef is Diarmid. Uh, O'Callaghan, so Grania Scalan from St. Anne's Community College, serving up the main course now, which is the fillet pork steak, which has been roasted with lemon thyme, uh, urban co-op purple sweet potato that we heard of earlier on from Dermot uh, in your piece, creamed leeks and oyster mushroom. Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Now, Stephen, very quickly, because I know I, I know you're going to want to taste, but just how encouraging is it to see all the TY students here today who've taken part in the hospi uh, hospitality training this year? Yeah, it, it's absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm just looking at the screen here uh, this morning and just look at the students and how professional they are. You know, they could be, I could be easily looking at the kitchen of the Strand Hotel. It's amazing to see they're working so methodically. They're so calm, as everybody has said. But the menus they're producing here you know, they're modern, sophisticated food that I'd be happy to have on the menu in the Strand. So it's great to see, you know, and their use of local produce is absolutely amazing. And this is what our industry needs to do, you know. Um, I, like Olivia just said there, I started in hospitality when I was uh, 15, 16. And uh, it's, it's always an industry that I've, I've stayed with. I love it. It's a brilliant industry. It's really rewarding as well. And I, I think what the students will find is, you know, you can see the fruits of your labor there in front of you. You know, it, that, it's, a, it's a lot different to a lot of other industries because what you cook there is served out to us and, you know, it's greatly appreciated straight away. You know, so it's a really rewarding industry. So um, I'm delighted to see this. There's a lot of stuff about hospitality at the moment. They say, you know, there's a crisis in, of chefs. And yes, it's really, really challenging. But we need to focus on the, the positives. And today is a real positive. And this is what we need to be doing, doing. We need to be building for the future and get young people into our industry because it's a fantastic industry. You know, contrary to what you might hear, it's very well paid. You know, you can travel around the world, you know, working in hospitality. As I said, it's really rewarding, you know. It's fun, it's fast paced, you know. So there's a real lot of positives there. So I'd encourage a lot of these students to stay in hospitality. You can have a great career, you know. And as I said, from what I see today, there's a lot of talent on display here. So, but I want to commend all of the students and, you know, Bernadette from the LCETB and their mentors and trainers, Tom and Dearmwood, you know, fantastic job. So it's a really positive day for the industry. Thank you so much, Stephen. Absolutely. Um, you enjoy your main course there. You. Um, I just have to say again, thank you so much for the staff at the Strand and how accommodating you have been, particularly in the kitchen area. And also, uh, you'll see milling around the background a lot of the hospitality campus staff. So Niall helping and uh, we met Carl earlier and lots of our mentors and our staff. So we want to say thank you uh, to them as well. Brilliant. Uh, so we are going to uh, maybe just take a wide shot of the room just for a couple of minutes and bring up some music and we will get Brendan in place because we want to speak to Brendan O'Neill next from the panel of chefs of and, Ireland. And after that then, just to let you know, we've been talking about local produce all day, absolutely, and how important it is. So I'm going to have Tom Flavin, when he's finished in the kitchen, come out and just give us a little idea. You see a beautiful display here of local produce, but we're going to get more in depth to that. But uh, for now, we're going to uh, leave it to Brendan. So, Brendan O'Neill is going to join us from Panel of Chefs of Ireland. Brendan, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to meet pleasure you. It's a pleasure to be here and see young chefs cooking so well. I'm just going to get a mic for you, and uh, so we'll be able to hear you okay, Brendan. So, uh, absolutely. Uh, you've travelled a bit to be with us today, I, but you watched the competition last year, and it's just incredible to be uh, here, isn't it's it? It's great to see young chefs, so young, being able to cook. Well, some people say they're, they're young students, but uh, once you get that good, uh, you're a chef, you know what I mean, you're on the way up, and that's where it'd be, uh, that's where I was <laughs> a long time ago, but since then, you know, like myself, I, I, I've cooked in every continent in the world, and I've 
<coughs> the panel chefs were now looking to have a junior team. To, sorry, uh, somebody sorry. phoning you right at the opportune moment. They want to tell you how good you're looking on YouTube right now, Brendan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're absolutely fine. That's... I'll call you back. <laughs> Listen, I've never seen that on live TV. That's really, really good. Uh, Brendan, in terms of, of what we've seen and to echo maybe some of the things that Wade has said, it's really incredible to see this level of talent so young, isn't it? You see, it's about coaching and doing apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are headed towards academia mm -hmm. through culinary arts. But what, what you need now is practical cookery, mm -hmm. practical skills and development that way. To a certain amount of academia goes along with it, but you have to be able to touch, taste, smell, and once you can do that there, you can be a really great chef. Um, we know, the panel chefs, we encourage people to develop their careers through competition. I'm looking for eight young chefs under 25 to compete in the Culinary World Cup of Cookery in Luxembourg in November. So that's why uh, Miss Enright and ourselves are we're pushing. Great. Well, anybody with money, or anybody <laughs> knows anybody with money, we we'll gladly take it. Fantastic. Mm. We are so proud of uh, the fact that you have given such attention to our hospitality campus in Limerick. It's such a wonderful relationship that Panel of Chefs of Ireland have with our campus, and we're absolutely thrilled to be it's working all, with you. We're also part of the World Chefs. You see everybody yes. with the logo on it. Mm -hmm. I'm also a developed. Uh, people with special needs to get into the culinary business as well. So it's all part of a big thing. Brilliant. Listen, we wish you and all of Panel of Chefs of Ireland at the very best and good luck in that competition and later on. I wish all these young chefs a brilliant future. Fantastic. Thanks Thank very you. much. Give Brendan a big round of applause. <laughs> so it's time to serve our dessert. So would you give a big round of applause and welcome back all of our TY chefs as they are now about to serve desserts. So Katrina Anakinyanka is first from Mungret Community College. She is accompanied by uh, her mentor chef Tom Flavin and she is serving what we heard about earlier on, that tip on the sticky toffee pudding uh, with Atty Flynn apple toffee sauce vanilla creme fraiche. Give her a big round of applause. All right, we're ready for our next student in the dessert category. Are we gonna, and don't forget as well, Tom, hopefully you're going to be able to stand by and have a chat with me afterwards. And we're going to have a chat just about all the local produce that you've been seeing uh, in the kitchen and here on the front of us. And uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of keeping it seasonal and keeping it local. That's what every chef, every mm. good chef tells me. You have mm. to keep it local and keep it seasonal. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see that the judges are really savouring uh, the yeah, dishes. They have our scoring charts there. So uh, Wade gave us a little bit of an idea of what we were looking for earlier, but obviously they're going to be scoring that now. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're going to leave us, honey? Uh, <laughs> I, doubt, I doubt it, no. Is that a no from the judging panel? Absolutely not. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot that's involved in a competition like that, and we're just delighted uh, that we have our judges here today, that they take time out of their very, very busy industries uh, to give us the time and to uh, judge today's competition. So we really do appreciate that. Yeah, the food looks absolutely impeccable on the close-up shots there. Uh, we are going to be doing our next dessert service momentarily. I think they're moving behind the scenes and making their way to us. Dessert is kind of my favourite part of the menu, sadly. Um, no, I'm the same, absolutely, yeah. Patrick. And just, uh, just to say, all the local uh, produce is used here as well. A lot of the students pick their own herbs and pick their own uh, seasonings. So we have Connor next, of course. Uh, and Connor Barry is representing, as we know, Goyle Kloshta Elimi, which uh, is our winners from last year. No pressure, Connor was saying that earlier. And uh, for his dessert, wait till you hear this chocolate and raspberry tart and creme fraiche as he presents it to the judges. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done, Connor. Wow, look at that presentation. I love that. That looks absolutely looks brilliant. Impeccable. Yeah, really, really good. It was great to see on the VT earlier on um, the practice run uh, in the kitchen from last week. So, uh, but that really, really uh, excels in terms of the visual that we're seeing in front of the judges. Do you want to go to Tom now? And yeah. then we can actually do the rest of the dessert service as our judges enjoy the food. Okay. I think we might, Niall from our hospitality campus, might be bringing out uh, some more. And okay. Tom is making his way out. So, yeah, we have another. Uh, dish ready and this is the the beauty of live tv and we love this because uh we are waiting on the timings from the kitchen and uh it's it's all about the timings in a competition like this not just for us on live tv but also uh for the students and contestants so i have to say let's give them a round of applause because this is a lot of pressure today so to be able
able to come out and time it so beautifully. So here's Niall uh, coming out with the next service. Please give a big round of applause to Dylan Stewart from Klaus Ida Agus Josef with his mentor chef Tom Flavin and serving up that uh, gorse flower and dandelion cheesecake with Rigney's Farm Granola. So give him another big round of applause. Okay, so we might actually go to Tom yeah. now, and we have a gorgeous uh, table over here of local produce. That's been our theme. We were talking to Councillor Olivia Sullivan about it a couple of minutes ago. Katrina. Yep, so uh, Tom, you're very passionate about this subject, and I think it's very representative here today to see in the kitchen all the local ingredients that have been used, and the local producers who are great sponsors here today as well of the event. So tell us a little bit about what's been used today and the support that we've received for this competition. Well, firstly, it's great to be able to showcase what we do have in Limerick. It's amazing what we have, apples. Um, at the moment, there's loads of rhubarb. It's not on the menu today, but we have loads of rhubarb, baby carrots. Like all of these come from, there's fantastic farmers in Limerick. Newly urban farmer, Kevin Wallace. We've been working with him for a long, long time. Um, Atty Flynn. Um, in Patrick's Well have the best apples you'll ever buy in the world. We have, like, Ackle Island Sea Salt is not from Limerick, but this, the Marjorie O'Malley is from Limerick. She's from the Innes Road. She has a business now in Mayo. She's creating her own sea salt. that's renowned worldwide. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like, all of the herbs and all of the, the fruit and veg we do here is, is all local. And it's great to be instilling it into the younger kids from a very young age. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. Like, some of the guys went and picked their own wild garlic for the dish. You know, it's, it's super, absolutely super. Dylan has been out the back picking gorse flowers. Now, it's not easy to pick gorse flowers because it's called furze bush and it's lots of thorns, but he picked loads of them, dried them. You know, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. How important is it finally then, Tom, to receive that support, though, as well, from the local um, sponsors that, that, you know, bring the food and bring the sponsorship to events? They see the importance, too, don't they, of inspiring young people uh, in this industry? Absolutely. And, it, like, if we instill it into the younger kids of today that we eat local and support local, it, it, they go with it for forever. You know, they live with that forever. And it's just, I suppose it was bred into me when I was young, growing up on a farm, we killed our own chickens. And, you know, it, it just lets you appreciate it what good food is. Well, we want to appreciate good food now because we have our next dessert, so let's make way. Thank you, Niall, from our hospitality campus who's making the way for... Give a big round of applause for <laughs> And Gronia is serving up the peach bakewell tart with the creme chantilly. And she is accompanied by her mentor chef, Dermot O'Callaghan. Give them a big round of applause. <laughs> well done, Gronia. So, uh, with all of that food served, there's a lot of it to taste for our judges and we wanted to ensure that everything was piping hot so that uh, the perfect flavours are there. There's a bit of work to be done yet for our judges, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a 15 minute break. Absolutely. I'd love to say there's one for everyone in the audience, but unfortunately you just get to smell the beautiful aroma and as our judges uh, taste and deliver their decision, we welcome you to take a 15 minute break and we will be back with decision time. See you then.
two minutes to go and uh, if we can have everyone at their seats and uh, just make your way up to the front as well if you can. Let's just fill those seats please. Welcome back to the Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022. While you've been away, our judges have been tasting all of that delicious food and scoring. We will be revealing in just a few minutes who will be crowned champion for 2022. Well, we've had lots of inspiration throughout the morning and throughout today, and uh, we decided to give you more words of inspiration. We have a very well-known, uh, very respected chef that you might recognize. Here's Nevin McGuire. Hello everyone, Nevin Maguire here. Uh, I'd like to just first of all wish everyone good luck taking part in the final of the Shannon Regional Junior Chef of the Year competition. Congratulations to Tom and all the team who put so much work and effort into this. The final is on the 17th of May in the Strand Hotel in Limerick and the wonderful Wade Murphy, good friend of mine, will be judging. So I want to wish all the finalists the very best of luck. I'm going to be signing the book and I have their names, which I'm going to do in a moment. This is a fantastic opportunity, you know, this competition and this course, because you're going to learn so much. And looking at the recipe, or the different menu options, soups, salads, you know, healthy fast food, cars for fuel, vegetarian cookery, fish week, I mean, like, you're spoiled for choice. So congratulations to Tom and all the team and all the finalists. And this is definitely a fantastic opportunity for any transition year student, because being a chef, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful career. And uh, for me, being a chef, I love what I do so much. So well done. I hope it's a great success. Good luck to Wade, Tom and everyone involved. And I'll be signing the books. Congratulations, guys. Thanks so much, Nevin. And the words of wisdom and encouragement don't just stop there. We're delighted also to have our TV chef, Mark Moriarty, to speak to you. Hi, everyone. Mark Moriarty here. I've been a chef now for over 12 years. Hopefully you may have seen me on some of the RT shows that we do, uh, both Beyond the Menu documentary about the best chefs in Ireland and Off Duty Chef cooking some simple recipes. Best of luck today in the finals. Uh, I hope you all have a great experience, cook some great food. Most of all, have a little bit of fun. Uh, and hopefully there'll be a couple of chefs that are budding away there. Um, I was fortunate enough to get into cooking through my transition work experience. So I suppose my best advice is to enjoy today. Uh, keep cooking, find the best ingredients, make delicious food. And if you are thinking about becoming a chef, don't be afraid to pick up the phone, or send an email or even an Instagram message to some of your favorite chefs and see, can you spend a little bit of time in a couple of kitchens, see what it's really like day to day, 
that's what I did, fell in love with it, and uh, it served me well ever since. So enjoy the day, and best of luck. Very wise words there from our TV chef, Mark Moriarty. Well, the time is nearly upon us when we announce our winners for 2022. But we've had lots of words of inspiration all day. So just before we do announce our winners, I am absolutely delighted to welcome our chief executive, Georgia Callaghan, to say a few words. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. You're all most welcome. Uh, delighted to see everybody here this afternoon. It's great that this event could be live. Uh, and hello to everybody who's joining us on screen as well or uh, live uh, on, on the web. So you're all most welcome. And uh, I'm delighted to see so many uh, brave faces around here because you're brave to have put your, your reputations on the line by entering this competition. And I'm sure you don't want to be listening to me for too long because you're more than anxious to find out who the winners are and who are the, the, the whose the prize winners are uh, and also welcome to our judges and thank you very much for participating in this who'd want to be a judge in this day and age no more than who'd want to be a referee in this day and age but i'll say no more about that um, <clears throat> So I'm delighted to be here this afternoon to attend. This is the second year of the Shannon Region Junior Chef uh, of the Year competition. And delighted to be here at the Strand Hotel uh, among you all. As we have come out of the pandemic uh, in, the last, in the last few months, and hopefully it's well behind us, uh, this is an opportunity for us to have a live event here uh, and to have people present and all of you present to take part in this competition. This apprenticeship taster scheme for transition years with an interest in hospitality and tourism and the tourism industry as a career has proven very popular uh, with our students across the region uh, and uh, in all of our schools over the last two years. And we're delighted to see so many participating in the event here today and also those who participated last year as well. This initiative commenced uh, last September uh, and is run by the College of Further Education and Training Hospitality Campus in Limerick and Clare. Uh, it's supported by our schools division and by our further education and training division and in that uh, instance I'd like to commend uh, the work uh, of Dunnaco Trasig, our director of schools, and Paul Patton, our director of further, ed further education and training. The programme itself is aligned with the new national FET strategy, uh, which is which purpose is to integrate uh, career courses into second level education uh, and to give people a taste of what it is like in, in the world of work. I would like to congratulate both of our divisions for their work in and collaborating in bringing this together. Limerick and Clare Education and Training Board uh, schools have participated in two different hospitality taster courses specifically developed for transition years over the last couple of years. A junior chef apprenticeship taster and a barista skills taster. The courses were undertaken by almost 450 transition year students who have an interest in this area as a career or in just learning a skill for life and take it for somebody who can just about boil an egg or burn toast. It's an excellent skill to have and will stand you in good stead even if you don't enter into a career in the hospitality industry. Our hospitality campus, uh, which is based in Roxburgh, is dedicated to providing the highest levels of culinary and hospitality training. Today's competition showcases uh, the strong relationship we have fostered within the Irish hospitality and tourism industry since its inception. And the hospitality and uh, training centre has gone from strength to strength since uh, it was set up uh, about eight or nine years ago in Roxburgh and has developed strong links with industry. Uh, and we're very proud of those links and we're very proud of the work we do with the hospitality industry uh, in this region. <clears throat> I would also like to thank uh, the team of professionals managed by Bernadette Enright, the transition year team and the executive chefs from the ETB's hospitality campus and the panel of chefs of Ireland who have helped make today's competition for our transition years students a, re a reality. And I think they deserve a round of applause for all of their work and all of their participation. And congratulations as well to all of you who have participated here today from the four schools, uh, from Colosh de Ida, August Joseph in, in Abbey Field, from St Anne's Community College in Killaloo, uh, from Gael Colosh de Limney here in Limerick City, and from Mungret Community College just on the edge of the city outside in Mungret. Congratulations to all of you for participating and for taking part. Congratulations and thanks as well to the school principals and the school management and to your teachers uh, for helping you, prepare you for, for today and for being involved 
involved in the organization of this of this event so um well done to everybody not everybody can win but it's great to participate it's great to learn the new skill uh, and the best of luck to all of you and hopefully some of you will find uh, work in the hospitality and and uh, sent industry over the coming years but if you haven't you have at least had the opportunity to learn a new skill that will stand you in good stead uh, and if you're living in an apartment or a, a flat or whatever or whoever you're living with you will be at least able to cook something for them unlike me who'll still burn toast and just about boil the egg thank you very much Thank you very much, George O'Callaghan, Chief Executive, Limerick and Clare Education and Training Board. Well, the wait is finally over and our TY students are all peppering here beside me. We're going to ask Wade Murphy, our head judge, to step forward. We'll need you for our presentation. George is going to step back in too for our presentation. And I'm going to invite forward now Bernadette Enright, who is the manager of our College of Fet Hospitality Campus. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, George, thanks, because you've, you've taken some of the people I was going to thanks here, um, so I'll just make it very, very brief for everybody. Um, look, the simple matter of it is that days like today do not happen without a journey, a journey of support that started last September of the academic year for the schools division of all of the schools. And that journey started with the principals, all of the teams within the schools and the TY students themselves. Overall, in the last year, we've trained nearly 450 students, and I think it's 15 schools that participated in this. I would like to also thank the George O'Callaghan and the senior management team of Limerick Clare Education Training Board. Our communications department today, without them, we couldn't have had such a production, and again, part of the support that we needed to make this day happen. I would like to thank our judges, Oliver Sullivan from Falch, Ireland, um, Stephen from general manager here of the Strand Hotel, and also the chairperson of the Shannon branch of the Irish Hotel Federation. Wade is here beside me, and councillor Olivia Sullivan from Limerick City Council. Also, the panel of chefs are here, and have supported the Hospitality College right through um, our, the last year and, and continuous years. Some of our sponsors um, today for the prizes, Cisco, Richardson's, Panel of Chefs who sponsored all of the medals. Also, the uh, John Clancy of the World Director of the World Chef Association. Our photographer who spent the last academic year throughout the schools, Brian is here, Brian Arter, I want to thank you, Brian. I think that's nearly all, except for my own team in the hospitality. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very privileged to be working with such a team as in the hospitality campus. The dedication, the enthusiasm they have for our industry that's catering hospitality and tourism. The extra hours that they've put in to training the students, the dedication, the getting them ready for the competition today. And last year, a lot of the schools will remember, we had the first edition of our book, which was coffee and cooking and coffee. And this year, we will have the second edition of that book out. All of that takes time and extra time outside school hours. So I want to sincerely thank the trainers and the team and the background team of the TY coordinators, that's the administration staff, Sharon's here today, and uh, Vivian, we're missing Liam because he's out teaching today, but without them, we couldn't pull this off either. So thank you very much for that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you back now to Patrick. So it is time to announce the winners of the Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022. And I understand that you have a joint third this year. Yeah, and actually, Patrick, I give you the list there. Could I borrow it? <laughs> <laughs> the secrets are here. I'll keep them close to me so, as I step forward. Okay. 
Thanks, Patrick. So in third place, Connor Barry from Abbey Field and Katrina Aninsky. Could you please put your hands together? So congratulations to Mungard Community College, Katrina Anakinyenka, and from Goel Kalos de Limnik, Connor Barry, joint third. Give them a massive round of applause. <laughs> they have received the Bronze Medal Award sponsored by Irish Panel of Chefs. I understand that the competition is very tight in terms of the scoring. Let's go back to you now, Bernadette, to reveal who is second in this year's Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022. In second place, Dylan Stewart from Abbeyfield. Congratulations to Dylan Stewart from Colossa Ida August Joseph Abbey Field. Well done to you and to your mentor chef Tom Flavin. All of our students taking part today have received some magnificent prizes, which I'll tell you more of in a couple of minutes. But Dylan is the winner of our silver medal. Now, Bernadette, it's time to reveal the overall title winner of Junior Chef of the Year 2022. And the winner goes to Gronia Scalan from St. Anne's, Killaloo. Congratulations to Gronia Scalan from St. Anne's Community College in Killaloo, crowned Shannon Region Junior Chef of the Year 2022, and her mentor chef, Dermot O'Callaghan. All of our students are receiving a personal autographed cookbook from Nevin McGuire, a 50 euro voucher from the IHF Shannon branch, a chef knife from Cisco, a hamper from Richardson Spood, 50 euro vouchers from Schools Division, all of our medals, as we said, thanks to the Irish panel of chefs. And in addition, our first prize winner, Gronia, is receiving a 250 euro voucher from Full to Ireland for Good Food Ireland. Give them all a massive round of applause. So we are coming to a close of this year's competition and we are going to take a step out, Katrina, as we walk live. Obviously, this was a fantastic competition again this year, but really helped by all of you here in the audience with us. Katrina, it was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic is uh, correct, Patrick, because last year, as you remember, we, we just enjoyed the competition so much, but we have to say again, thank you so much for coming along and making this an in-person event for the first time. And we look forward so much to 2023, but this is our students' moment. Let's give them another round of applause because it is all about them today. Congratulations to Grania, our winner, and to all of the contestants today. You have done it. your schools, your parents, your families, and everyone here today, very, very proud. Thank you so much to all of you in our schools across the region who are watching this programme live today on our YouTube live stream. A huge thank you to all of the team who made this event so possible. And a big, big thanks to everybody who really encouraged all of our TY students throughout the year. Remember, 450 participants, and it all comes down to this. Well done again to all of our TY students. Thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to welcoming you back next year for our 2023 competition. Goodbye.